is spanning tree important in switched networks? What happens when you disable spanning tree? Do you actually need spanning tree in a layer 2 Ethernet network? Okay, so let's see what happens. At the moment on both the switches, a default configuration is being used. So show spanning tree shows us that spanning tree is enabled on VLAN 1. On switch 1, all ports are forwarding. Switch 1 is the root of the spanning tree. Spanning tree is also running on switch 2, on VLAN 1. The switch is not the root switch. Interface gigabit 102 is blocking on this switch. So let's disable spanning tree. Conf T, no spanning tree, VLAN 1. On this side, no spanning tree, VLAN 1. So on switch 1, show spanning tree shows us that spanning tree is disabled. On switch two, show spanning tree shows us that spanning tree is disabled. Notice all ports are now showing green. No ports are being blocked. Please note that I'm running in simulation mode in packet tracer. And what I'm gonna do now is send a ping from PC1 to PC2. PC2's IP address is 10.1.1.2. The MAC address of PC2 is this. On PC1, IP address is 10.1.1.1. MAC address is this. So what happens if we ping PC2? We're sending an ICMP message, but the PC doesn't know the MAC address of PC2. So it's gonna send an op into the network, which is a broadcast, and it's gonna try and find out the MAC address of PC2. I'm gonna click capture forward. The op message is sent to the switch Notice what happens, it's sent to switch two. Switch two, however, duplicates the packet and floods it out of all ports. So it goes back to switch one on gigabit 101 and it's received by PC2. So PC2 is receiving this broadcast. And now PC1 is receiving the broadcast that it's sent. Notice the source MAC address is PC1. Destination is broadcast. It's looking for the MAC address of PC2. So PC1 will drop that packet. But notice we now have multiple packets being flooded through the network. PC1 has received the op message once again. So has PC2. So PC2 is receiving multiple op requests from the network. The switches are also duplicating packets. When we look at the MAC address table of switch 2, we can see that PC2 is found on gigabit 103 and PC1 is found on gigabit 102. Capture forward. Notice now the switch thinks that PC2 is connected to gigabit 102, whereas in actual fact, PC2 is connected to gigabit 103. Once again, this is the MAC address of PC2. So the switch is receiving conflicting information. Previously it thought that PC2 is connected to this port. Now it thinks that PC2 is connected to this port. 
capture forward again. And now it thinks that PC2 is connected to gigabit 101. So the switch previously thought that PC2 is connected to 103, which is correct. Then it thought that PC2 is connected to 102, and now it thinks that PC2 is connected to 101. Previously it thought that PC1 is connected to 102, then to 101, and now to 102. So the MAC address table is constantly being updated. This is how broadcast storms happen in live networks, which can bring down an entire network. We have duplication of packets. We have MAC address table instability. We have hosts receiving the packets that they sent out into the network such as here, PC1 receiving its own ARP request message. Generally, we don't talk to ourselves. And in the same way, a PC doesn't send a broadcast to itself like we see in this network. And if I continue doing that, notice we constantly, constantly. we constantly have these ARP messages being duplicated and flooded through the network. Packet Tracer isn't showing all of the duplication here, but notice this just continues on and on and on and can cause a broadcast storm and network meltdown in a real network. The same original packet is being duplicated multiple times. Notice this is still an op message looking for the MAC address of PC 10112. And if I continue to capture forward, we just see those messages being sent continuously by the switches throughout the network. So, is spanning tree important? Definitely. Should you disable spanning tree in a layer 2 network? In most cases, no. Layer 2 switched networks or a single broadcast domain, a broadcast gets flooded throughout the layer 2 domain. If you had a more complex network like this, your broadcast storm would be even worse. Here's a very simple example of what happens when spanning tree is disabled. So I'll go back on to switch 1, and I'll re-enable spanning tree. I'll do something similar on switch 2. Enable spanning tree. Notice now we see spanning tree messages being sent between the switches. That's how the switches learn about one another. They are sending out BPDUs. So in Packet Tracer, we can see the actual BPDU messages. I'll turn this back to real time. And what should happen now is the ports should transition to green once the switches have learnt about one another and decided who the root bridge is. Notice the ports are currently in the learning state. Show spanning tree on switch 2. We see something similar. These ports are now forwarding. This port is blocking. On switch 1, all ports have transitioned to the forwarding state. So we can now see that this port is blocking in Packet Tracer. So let's do that ping again. We've got an ARP message being sent into the network. That now gets sent to switch 2 across port gigabit 101. It's sent to PC2. But notice this packet is going to be dropped the packet will not be forwarded out of port 102. Spanning tree is blocking that broadcast. The packet is only forwarded to PC2. We now have the op reply from PC2 back to PC1. 
So in the inbound PDU, we can see target MAC address, target IP address, source MAC address is PC2. This is an op reply message. Get sent across the top link to switch one and gets sent to PC1. And now PC1 can send the ICMP message using the top link to PC2 and the reply can be sent back to PC1. That's what we wanna see in an ethernet network. We wanna have the devices communicating with each other. So hopefully this packet tracer demonstration has shown you how important spanning tree is in a layer two switched network. Even in this small topology, the network breaks when spanning tree is disabled on both switches. Make sure that you have spanning tree enabled on layer two switched networks, unless you have a very good reason to disable spanning tree on your switches.